What's up Sega fans, it's Dan the Mega Driver here of the Sega Guys and I wanted to discuss an update on the homebrew scene. We love to stay on top of the Sega scene as much as we can and put out videos as much as we are able to. This week, not one, not two, not three, but four interesting projects hit significant milestones. I'd have loved to deep dive into each and every one of them, though there may not have been enough for a full video for all of them, and it's unlikely we'd have been able to deliver the coverage for each one quickly. So instead, here's a quick roundup of four exciting projects in the Sega homebrew community this week. The first is RE GTA 3 DC. It's been the eternal question, hasn't it? Could the Dreamcast have handled a port of Grand Theft Auto 3? A former Rockstar developer had said that it could have turned in a decent port of the iconic PS2 title. Then this week, Coda Stefanos Cornelos Mitsis Pointidis, apologies if I butchered the pronunciation there, shared an update on a port of RE GTA 3 for the Dreamcast. For those who don't know, RE GTA 3 is a project to completely reverse engineer the source code for Grand Theft Auto 3 and Vice City. The GitHub listing for the original RE GTA 3 project has been taken down, but the spirit still lives on with a project that has seen homebrew ports to other devices. Stefano's released a number of updates via images and a short video over the last week. We can see some familiar sites as well as the slightly corrupted UI and loading screen visuals. A later update was provided courtesy of the supremely talented Frogball, who made some optimizations to get the game running at a smoother frame rate. And that is the footage that you are seeing right now. Links to Frogball's full video, as well as Stefanos' work, will be provided in the description below. Now this Dreamcast port is extremely early in its development, with a low frame rate and graphical models that need to be properly implemented. It also currently requires the 32-bit RAM expansion mod, so it works in emulators, but you'll need to physically modify your Dreamcast hardware in order to get it to run. So at the moment, it is too early to say for certain that it's happening, but it is without a doubt an exciting development in the Dreamcast scene. Next up is Drifting Rage. Now you may recall in the latest Final Fight MD update video that we mentioned talented developer Moro Xavier had a super scaling demo running on Mega Drive hardware. We are now seeing the fruit of that labor in a completely new and original title called Drifting Rage. Taking inspiration from a host of legendary classic racing games from the 16-bit era, this new title looks and sounds remarkable. The smooth animation on display in the car movement and in the scaling of the track itself is utterly phenomenal considering the hardware that it's running from. The same can be said of the excellent music on display, which is demonstrated via the Outrun inspired radio selection screen. There appear to be multiple characters and vehicles for players to choose from, and the gameplay itself looks sublime from this clip. Already, this is a homebrew Mega Drive project that you'll need to keep your eyes open for, with Morrow already demonstrating his exemplary coding chops in his fantastic Final Fight port. You will not want to miss this. Next up, we've got an update on the Dreamcast FPGA emulation core. Now remember that Super Sega from our Sega console coverage? This all-in-one solution has been met with some understandable cynicism in the community, and I myself have some questions and doubts about the project. One of those questions appear to have been answered though, as we can now see a new Dreamcast FPGA core being demonstrated by the Super Sega team. Given the roots of that project being so closely tied to the emulation scene, it's something we might have expected, but that doesn't make the achievement any less impressive. Just like RE GTA 3, it's very early days in this project, and the footage here does seem to be a little bit choppy, possibly demonstrating some frame rate and speed issues, particularly in the demonstration of Crazy Taxi running on the core. But you'd imagine this talented team of emulation veterans can get much closer as the project progresses. Even at this early stage, this looks much better than I think anyone expected representing some phenomenal work from the Super Sega team. Perhaps this significant step forward is the one that may start to convince the project's most ardent naysayers. Finally, we move from a number of projects in their early stages to one that has come to completion. 
Doom has had an interesting journey on Sega systems, from the 32X port of the original game, which played quite well, but did have several cutbacks, and is affectionately known by John Linneman as the Farts and Zippers edition. And we also had the awful Sega Saturn port, so Doom never really got the love that it deserved on Sega systems. Thankfully, the homebrew community has stepped in multiple times in the past, and we now have a seemingly final and complete version of Doom 64 playable on Dreamcast. For those that don't know, Doom 64 is actually a sequel of sorts and entirely separate from the original Doom in terms of execution and narrative, and it's great to finally have this playable on Sega Dreamcast. It's a port that we've seen a number of months ago, and it is great to see it finally come to completion. Much like RE GTA 3 and Tomb Raider on the 32X, this is born from the decompilation of Doom 64 itself to allow it to be broken down and then ported to multiple devices. As you can see from this footage, this fan-made Dreamcast version runs flawlessly at a crisp 480p and at 60 frames per second. It's an absolutely sensational version that rivals the recent ports on modern devices. Unfortunately, I've not had a chance to play this myself yet, but as soon as I'm able to get a version ready to run on my Dreamcast, I'll definitely be putting it through its paces. And if you want to see more of that project or any of these other ones, let us know. I think you'll agree that these are all extremely exciting projects coming from an incredible Sega homebrew community. More information on all of these can be found in the show notes, so please check them out and give credit and support to the talented individuals who are making these things happen. And does this sort of quick news update work for you viewers? Is this something you'd like to see more of in the future? Tell us in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Sega Guys content. And until next time, we will see you on the Sega side.